welcome to this week's Swarf and Chips. This is what's coming up on today's show. Now, this is going to be a very informative show because if you want your business to be streamlined, then this is the man to talk to. We have got Jeff here from PSL Data Track. Thank you for joining us, Jeff. Thank you, Lindsay. I'm very pleased to be here. Well, actually, I'm really pleased you are because we've been prepping for this show for probably about an hour and a half talking about your product. And I'm so excited because it's not just about the mm. machines, but you're basically the glue that holds many companies together. Yes, engineers. Yeah, engineers think I need my machine, my tool, and things like that. They don't think about the the process in the background, the admin. The, um, don't want to say it really, but the boring stuff. And yeah, you yeah. deal you deal with that very simply. And ultimately, yeah, it'll make them more profitable and. It's all about pounds, isn't it? It will do, yeah. 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 Um, the system starts with a quotation. Mm -hmm. Every subcontract precision engineering company starts with quoting for what they're going to make. Yep. So if you're going to quote for it, you've got to think process, yep. you've got to think set times, cycle times, the material, how much material, what's it going to cost? You've got to think about subcontract services. Maybe there's heat treatment, maybe there's plating, anodizing, whatever. Mm -hmm. Is it going to be batch costs, price based on weight, piece prices, whatever, markups? So you've quoted it. You may quote a batch size, then the customer wants another batch size. Yeah. Do you and you don't want to go back again. You don't no. want to have to go back to square one No, again. no, because you've done most of that work. Mm -hmm. You won't simply just change a quantity and work a price because that's, that's not necessarily reflective of the commercial reality. You may have, for example, a larger batch size. Maybe you'll go down to a smaller, to a lower hourly rate. It could be that maybe based on a batch size, maybe get keener prices for the subcom process, whatever. So you've got the core that's the same, but there are other variables that may change. And the system deals with all that. So going from a 50 off to a 500 off, it's not just Tom's in it by 10. Let me no. get the maths right. <laughs> your, your, your software does all that for, yes. for the engineers and it's a process where that quotation process covers everything. It does, yeah. We're yeah. actually going yeah. to see a quotation yep. through the system, aren't we, with Geo yes. and Technical Corner. Yeah. So you, we'll see one example of a quotation, but how yeah. do you cope with individual circumstances, individual companies? Because so, every, every company is different. Yeah. So demands that are unseen that, that then come up after the event? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So in reality, as you say, every customer has their own unique requirements. They could be caused by their customers, giving them a requirement that's not been thought of or assessed before. Mm -hmm. So we run a wish list in the system. So every customer contributes ideas of things they would like the system to do. And we look at those ideas and bring those out in new features in the system to accommodate that. Mm. If we get to a situation where a customer had a unique requirement that became really urgent, talk to us. And mm. we look to tackle those as well. So it's not just give us a general idea, right. we'll put it on a list. No, it's not. It's a case of give us ideas, but if you've got something that's really causing you an issue now, mm. talk to us. Yeah. We want to take so those issues away. It yeah. comes out, so you've got an off-the-shelf software package, but two, two things, and we spoke to Rob at AIM about this as well. Mm. It is an off-the-shelf software package, but you've built it around his requirements, so yeah. um, it is bespoke for them. Yes, in fact, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah so there's a base product, yeah. and then on top of that, we have a huge amount of configuration. In the current version, the 2017 version, yeah. we have 1,200 configuration options right. that we set independently. So that yeah. controls how different features work for different customers. Yeah. That's what gives us the stability of a base product that's very proven, but gives us the ability to, in, to then change features for individual customers. Okay, but it's not, and also when they're looking at process control systems, there yeah. are other ones out there, but yours is specifically for engineers. It is, yeah, so. yeah. Our system was designed for subcontract precision engineers yeah. doing their quotation. It's not a general manufacturing system or a right. warehousing system yeah. that's been adapted. It is designed for subcontract precision engineering, process, subcon, materials, yeah. tooling costs, and, and so on. And that's 95% of your... Your it is. Customers. Yeah, yeah. That's our core. That's, that's where we specialise. Mm. Yeah. And that's, you know, people who are watching this are going to connect. At the end of the day, a lot of engineers will be engineers, but then they've walked into this, you know, world. I can mm. do this. Oh, I, you know, I've got this job. I want to buy this machine. But then as the company grows, then other problems happen, don't they? They, oh, yeah. they, you know, you come up yeah. against new things and then you need administration and then you're taken away from the job that you wanted to do because mm. you're doing your administration. So what, what do you do to back all of well, this that up? Engineers want to make components. That's it. Yeah. They want to be in there making yeah. these great components, fantastic parts, things like that. They don't want to be burdened with admin and filing and all sorts of, well, mundane, boring, boring stuff. No, not at all. And it's like you say, um, if the machine's not running, you're not earning money. Yeah. Yeah. So you don't want to distract. Very often there could be one or two key people in the business that yeah. do quotations. 
and ultimately questions would come back to them. Mm. Every time a question comes back, details required about subcom process maybe you've sent a job out for, you're distracting them. Mm. Why keep distracting them? It's in the quotation that can be referenced by everyone else in the business who needs to see the information. Mm. That can then also get taken through the system to reduce time taken and to improve accuracy. You mm. don't order the wrong thing. You don't order the wrong quantity. Pay the wrong price and so that, on. That never it's happens, surely. Pay no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> but also, you, oh. sorry, just to say, as yeah. also that person could be off ill. That yeah. can then break oh, yeah, down yeah. the whole company. Well, one yeah. two, I mean, you've got a huge yeah. amount of testimonials, and one of those was, I think the guy had just bought the business, but his IT sort of guy had gone off long term sick, and yes. Not the business fell apart, but it was a real, real struggle. And that's where you came in and basically sa saved his bacon. Yes, yeah, so the guy there was actually an engineer doing the quotes yep. and obviously had the, had the knowledge of how to use the system. Yep. Then you've got, okay, so he's off. We've got quotes in there. We still need to accept orders. Yep. Okay, so the, those orders could still be raised. You've then also got the situation of somebody without the engineering background necessarily, mm -hmm. who's then got to take over and do quotations with help from engineers from the shop floor, yeah. you can get the knowledge, yeah. but then make sure you cover all the bases and the quotation helps you with that. Mm. What about guys though, you know, engineers, again, they've been concentrating on their machines and mach making components. They might have some old software, you know, it might even be DOS based. Some of these guys still yeah. run, run the old system. Yeah, yeah. You know, you've got a heap of information in there. How am I going to get it onto your system? Okay. It's, it's, going to, yeah, it's yeah. going to be a nightmare, isn't it? Yeah, so, so what we can do, where there's useful information in an old system, provided the information can be extracted from the system, we can get it imported into DataTrack as a good starting point. Oh, right. So if you've got quotations in an old database, you've got good processes, let's say, why start from scratch? Yeah. Why not let us take that data and get it imported into the system? Yeah, absolutely. So it's, yeah. it's just simplifying it for everybody and then building that package as well. Will that yeah. help then with accreditation? It will do, yes, because then you've got the fact the system's able to, because it, think of the quotation as the software equivalent of setting a machine. So the fact you've got all those details set, mm -hmm. from taking an order and everything that happens beyond there, you've got it set up. You know what material to buy. So you start off by buying the right material from the right supplier. Mm. Maybe you've got to buy from certain key suppliers for certain customers even. Okay. We even have that as a situation where, based on the grading of a supplier, mm. you can only use certain suppliers for certain customers. Oh. So you don't break down even minor details. Buy from the right supplier, receive the material, trace it. Yeah. Um, the job's going through, you've machined it, you've got a record of who's, who's worked on the job, which machines were used, depending on how much of the system you use and want to trace, but you know which operator which machine, how long it took, send it out for subcon, who worked on it. Again, all fully traced. From a point of view of accreditation, you need to be able to demonstrate you've yeah. got all that information being, being recorded and you've managed the whole process. And that's the same with audits, because um, we went to Will Park, which yeah. chat with Phil there, and he said it, it used to be a nightmare. I think it's a three-day job and you go through all the filing. Mm -hmm. Now he just pretty much presses a button and the auditor he didn't need time to finish his coffee. It was, <laughs> no, it was that simple. Yeah, it's quite right. <laughs> I don't think it was that good, but it you know, really streamlined the whole process. I wasn't there to watch how long it took, but, uh, <laughs> but there's a key report in the system, a key mechanism that the auditor can pick any single job at random that they want to spot check. The system can then produce a document of everything that's happened to that job. Wow. Um, and then it's a case of, right, there's a the document, there's the filing cabinet, go and get the paperwork and check it if you like. Nice. And if the customer scans documentation at the point of receiving material and so on, mm. they don't even need to go to a filing no, cabinet. It's they can just click it, through the screen know. and they can retrieve those documents. Yeah. So Amazing. it makes the accreditation and the audit so much simpler. We will see a quotation yeah. as well on the Cycle Time Challenge with Ge Geo in no, a few moments time. Corner. But I just want to say as well, sorry mm. Colin, no, right. but um, as a quote because you know, doing the research on the companies, meeting yourself, I have never seen a company with so many uh, you know, positive case studies that well, you've sent to me. Yeah. Well, you they keep me busy because yeah. like, we've got another testimonial calling. Another one? Okay. But there's loads and mm. just showing streamlining efficiencies. And, and someone said that you were the backbone to their administration. So, yes. you know, in their company, yeah. which is uh, fantastic. Great. Getting that kind of response is extremely yeah. rewarding. It's, mm. yeah, it's great. Awesome. Mm. It really is. And also, feedback, feedback as well is you are receptive and people want things changing. They pick up the phone to you guys and it mm. gets done. Yeah. So it's not just selling the software, it's providing that support yeah. and key, you know, key to it is that support that, that everyone raves about it. It is. Well, it's not just in the customer's interest, it's in our interest as well. We want to improve the product. We want to deliver the best service we can to our customers. Yeah. Yeah. And we do that by responding. Yeah. Yeah. Now, you mentioned technical corner, but you also mentioned cycle time challenge. I'm going to interject here. We've got a cycle time challenge, which was done by Paul and he's at Alatex. I think we'll have a quick look at that as a, a little bit of a... Little watch. Watch, little watch and then we'll, okay. come, we'll come back to you and find out some more about 
PSL Day Track. OK. Cycle Time Challenge. Yeah, thanks, Colin. Yes, yeah, so I'm at Alitech Precision in Silverstone. This is a really good manufacturing success story. Uh, Darren started the company just over three years ago, and already he's making the best use of his Spinner 5-axis machine and OpenMind's Hypermill software, making parts like this. Darren, thanks for the invitation today. Uh, firstly, tell us a little bit about the company and the background, why you started, and what you're up to these days. OK, um, so I'm primarily from a designing background, uh, vehicle-based. Um, was working for a local company actually designing superchargers three years ago. I just got to the point where I felt like I wanted to go out on my own really and um, you know we had a few customers that I dealt with quite a lot in my own time. Um, so yeah one thing led to another and here we are. So here we are three, you founded the company three years ago. How, how difficult was the first year? And for those that might be thinking at the moment they're, they're operators in machine shops and they might be thinking right I'm going to make a leap of faith on my own. Is it hard? Um, yeah, it can be tough. Um, certainly you've got to be willing to put in some serious hours. Um, obviously setting up a machine shop is one of those businesses where it requires a fairly large cash injection up front. Um, I was lucky enough that you know, a, a local company helped me kind of get a foothold. Um, but yeah, the main thing is you've got to put the hours in. Hard work, yeah. Now you, you're now proud to be the owner of a, a Spinner U620 here, five axis machine. Uh, and also making components like this is, is no mean feat. You're using Hypermill's um, or OpenMind's Hypermill software to do something like this. Just tell us about you know, your journey with parts like this. Are you designing these from scratch and then machining them and, and everything complete? Yeah, so we're kind of, we do both ends of the scale as a business. We, there's lots of things we make whereby we supply a CAD model and they just want us to make it. Um, and we have another probably half of our customer base where we will do the whole job for them. So just a post-it note sketch or a box of bits, we'll design it and do the whole job start to finish. And that's quite different to a lot of engineering companies. If you took engineering companies, precision engineers, sort of 80% of them might be aiming to get repeat work, repeat volume work, maybe tackle one or two just one or two customers, whereas you're kind of looking to go for the high value uh, design element as well as the manufacturing, aren't you? Yeah, sure. I mean, you know, obviously off the back of putting all the hard work into design and make the one-offs, you hope you get a repeat order down the line for some more, which eight times out of ten does work out, you know, that's, that's what keeps our three-axis machine side very busy. Um, but yeah, we're happy to do the one-offs as well. Okay, now as our viewers will like, we always like to do a cycle time challenge, so we're going to do that okay. from here today with you, Darren. Darren, can you pick up the part yeah. here, I want to have a look at this, and just tell our viewers, uh, down the microphone, what, what, maybe not specifically what this is, but how, how you go about machining this part, from what material, uh, and the types of um, operations that you do with it. Okay, so yeah, it's, it's a billet upright for a motorsport company. Um, it's an aerospace grade alley, um, and it is tied up pretty tight. Um, you know, 0.0102 across the part, all the bores are H7. So yeah, it's, it's fairly involved. And are you doing it on this spinner machine? Yes, we do, yeah. Okay, so operation-wise, what are you doing this in, in two ops? Um, we actually do it in four. Because of the tolerance, we actually rough it fully purposely leave it on the bench for a couple of days to let the stress go out of it before we then put it back in the machine and do final machining ops. Okay, okay, so some people might think two ops. Uh, so this particular part, how long is, we're talking about machining time specifically here, cycle time challenge for this week. Remember you can win an MTD CNC goodie bag which comes equipped with, you'll like one of these, it comes with a hat, it comes with a t-shirt, it comes with uh, machine magnets, USB sticks and even uh, a, a nice bottle of, of wine. And you can win that if you guess the cycle time or how long it takes to machine this part, just the machining from start to finish. And it's, uh, thank you very much for your time today Darren. And uh, back to you guys. I think it's time that I won one of these Swarf and Ships goodie bags. <laughs> so t it keeps talking about, but I haven't actually seen, seen one, my own one yet. So a lot of material removal there, taking out the, the couple of days when it's sit sitting around between the, the, the rough cuts and things. I'm going to go nine hours 40. Nine hours 40. Long, yeah, I know, big one. Okay. Colin, but, I think maybe a touch, touch quicker. Maybe I'm being, up, being optimistic. Uh, it's been a good, Let's a go. good machine. I'm going to go seven hours, 25. Ooh, right. right. Well, I'll share my goodie bag when I win it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you too, of course, can join in with Cycle Time Challenge. Just comment in the boxes below and then you'll be entered into the competition and you can win everything that Paul just said there.
Back to PSL data track though, because I have learned so much from your company and I'm genuinely so excited about your product because of the case studies. Mm -hmm. But for me, you know, if I had, like I say, the best engineers and the best machines going, how can you kind of prove to me that your product can help my business? Okay, from a, from a point of view of controlling your business, it's yeah. not just about the machining. You've got to make sure that everything that happens to process that order, to make sure you get it out on time, to make sure it's, it's of high quality and so on, that, that one needs to be managed. Yes. Now, the quotation is the software equivalent of setting a machine. It's got all the details that we need to follow. Mm -hmm. So why reinvent the wheel? Yeah. Why have somebody that's got to process different parts of the administration around that? Why have them start from scratch? Why have them come back to the person that did the quote mm -hmm. to find information? All have there. the system bring it all through for them. Mm. So in terms of time saving, they're able to place the works order extremely quickly, you'll see that. They can acknowledge it instantly, email that back to the customer. Presentation is key as well. Mm. It's not just about good parts. You've got to convince the customer, your customer, mm. that you're going to deliver a good service. And that starts with presentation as well. Mm. Deliver well laid out documents to present the right image. Well, a great example of that is um, Robert, AIM, AIM. They do a lot of aerospace stuff, but, um, yeah. and they were sending out the paperwork from your system. And his end customer said, "This is what we need. You know, all our clients need this quality." They yeah. really do. So the presentation was fantastic, and yeah, yeah. Rob reiterated that in his video, which we did. I'm forgetful, yeah. right? I'm forgetful. Lindsay Vickers, <laughs> Swarf and Chips. <laughs> yeah, okay, yes, I remember now. But we all have those moments when we're forgetful and we get taken yeah. off, you know, here, there yeah. and everywhere. Life is busy, we know what it's like. Social yeah. media, everything takes over. Yeah. But within the company, you can't be forgetful. So how does your product help, you know? I've got a bill that needs to be paid, but I've forgotten about that because I'm t looking after somebody else. How yeah. do you control that and stay on top of things. Okay, so in terms of things like material that needs to be ordered, the system has a constant record of whether it's outstanding to be ordered or not. If it's been ordered, when's it due in? So you know what to chase up. So then you can say, well, okay, I don't want to go looking at what I want to chase up. Depending on how much of the system you have, the style of your business and so on, you can have status boards. Now, status boards in data track are like going to an airport and having arrival and departure boards. Oh, okay. No one needs training for those, you know what to look at. Yeah. It tells you which gate to go to, brilliant, fine. So take that same concept, apply it to data track. Now if you've got, let's say you've got uh, key goods you've ordered that are due to come in. Let's face it, if you've ordered material and that's late in, and that's going to affect your machining, mm. how are you gonna get those parts out the door on time to your customer? Mm. You need to monitor those things have a status board. Right. It's showing you then anything overdue, chase it now. But that, that status board is different to the board they're looking at with actual machining parts. Just clarify. You could have, yes, so you yeah. could have, for example, uh, out in the machine shop, you could have a status board yeah. of, that's effectively a work to list. Right. Okay. Jobs that need to be set, mm. jobs that are running yeah. now. Uh, but it could be anything that gets the spade on okay. there. If it's in the system, we There's can There's so much it. going on as well. Again, I'm going back to Robert A. Yeah. How your products have grown with their business, because yes. when they first started, they were, well, not first started with you, they, were, they, had about, they were doing about 125 different parts batch sizes have reduced, but they're looking mm. 500, 700 parts. How on earth are you going to control that? And your software does that, and he absolutely raves about it. Yeah, yeah. And what has made me think, you know, is my business too small, too big for your mm -hmm. product? Yeah, yeah. You know, because you're talking about status boards, maybe I am, you know, it's just growing a little bit, my business, yeah, yeah. say. Yeah. Where, where do you fit in? What, what, what's the right time to invest, really? Yeah, okay, well, there's no time that's the wrong time, if you like. The mm. system is scalable, it's modular. So the idea is that it's not one size fits all because that's not reality. Mm. The system is then chosen and scaled to suit your business and how much of your business you wish to control through the system. So your basic things are you'd have quotes in there, you'd have the sales and purchase order processing up to invoice, you may stop there. Mm. Or you may decide to go into scheduling, shop floor data collection, yeah. tool management. So you can define your own library of tools, have tool setup sheets, mm. quality, non-conformance gauge calibration, and it's, it's very it's wide reaching. There. But if you're small and you want to start this size, start there. And then as you grow, you can add bits into the system. And again, yeah. we go back to testimonials. There was one yeah. testimonial where it was a brand new engineering company and they invested straight away. There's another one where I think the company had been going 65 years and they invested and it's just helped take their business. And I think one thing that's highlighted in, out of these testimonials, it is a bit of a rogues gallery of engineers because you know, you know people like yeah, yeah. you know <laughs> Unicut, RDL, Tefla Turn, you know Empire. We can numerous numerous people, but it's made them successful. And they are mm. when you say those names, you think they are you know they are really really good engineers. Mm. They are successful. And how they've done it, help you guys. 
Mm. To be honest, we're very, very proud of the customer base we have. We have a great many very high profile customers in there that, yeah. that give us great response, yeah. great feedback. They help with our wish list. Right. Well, I think it's time. <laughs> Will you come back? Because we do have a couple more questions for you. Yeah. But are you ready to see Geo? in technical course. Yes, put you on, put you <laughs> like, re ready yeah. as I'll ever be. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> put you on the pressure and prove, you know, prove, prove what you're saying. Mm. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah, happy to, yeah. Thank you. Technical Corner. Welcome to this week's Technical Corner. This week we have Jeff from PSL DataTrack. Welcome, Jeff. Thank you, Joe. Engineers have been investing a fortune in new equipment, the latest technology, to save seconds. Now, PSL data track, am I right in saying that it could give a return of investment for all of your investments? Yes, the system is about maximising the efficiency of your whole business, including the machine shop. But there's other areas you need to make sure are efficient as well. The system starts with a quotation, and that defines everything you need. It's the software equivalent or administration equivalent of setting a machine. Once that's done, all the information that you need to administer that job can then just flow through. So you don't need to keep put, putting the same information in time and, a t and time no, again? No, not at all. So once it's in once, it's used accurately and it can be used on a repeated basis as well. And stored in the database. Yeah. Yeah. Can you give me an, can you show me how this is done? Yeah, yeah. The system we've got is configured in MTD colours, or close enough. Mm, thank you. <laughs> okay, so the quotation, just to give you an idea of how it's gone together. Colin Griffiths? It is, yeah. Thank you, uh, Colin, <laughs> for the inquiry. <laughs> Okay, so we're quoting for a filter body. There's the drawing number, there's the issue, there's the batch size. We have the process of how you're going to make it. The machine tool use, other resources, set time, cycle times, and so on. It's not the whole story. You need the material and you need subcontract processes, potentially, depending on what the component is. Okay, and that's the important bit. If you send a job out for subcon processes, how do you send it to the right subcontractor? How do you ask for the right thing? and so on. So how is it done with this system? Okay, so what we're going to do now, if we assume the quotations are done, which only ask for information, you need to do a quote anyway. Okay, we'll assume we've now received a sales order from the customer. We, we're now going to put on the order. We'll confirm the customer. We can then have a look at all the parts that customer could be ordering from us. And it, okay, there's the filter body part. I'll double click on there. Thank you, Colin. Um, I'll put in the purchase order number and I'll confirm the date we would like these delivered. And I'll save the order. So very simply, with a few clicks, I've got the order on the system and I could generate an order acknowledgement to send to the customer. That could be emailed straight out. That gives you a good presentation and a fast response. Okay. The materials, they could either be bought for a job or could be bought for stock. Let's assume in this case they're bought for the works order. So I'll jump to the purchasing system. We haven't placed any orders for that job. Fine. New order. There's the material supplier. So it's told us who to use. I'll put a line on the purchase order. If you look at how much I type, most information is just coming through automatically. All I'm going to do now is confirm the date we would like the material. Let's have it on Monday. And I'll save the order. That could be emailed directly to your supplier. And there's the purchase order. Is this the only software that has been designed for engineers to be used this is this simple? Our software has complete emphasis on precision engineering. So our, our USP, if you like, is that we sell almost exclusively into precision engineering. The focus of how the quote goes together is very tailored, and so are the functions throughout the rest of the system. And that's why we've got the very easy input and the repeatability and the lack of having to put things in again. It just flows through. So you'd go and see a customer, you'd um, see what his requirements are, and mm -hmm. you'd set up a bespoke software production system for him? Yeah, so what we have, we have a base product, which is, if you like, 95% of the product the customer will have. Based on that, there are certain key elements they, they may want included. That's the modular build-up of the system. How many of the blocks do you want, if you like? But then that extra 5% is how they like it tailored. And that's where our huge configuration comes in, is how we tailor it so that we can have features specific to one customer without inflicting them, in some cases, on everyone else, because they may be unique. Yeah. But you need that stability of a core base. Yeah, okay. no, that makes sense. I mean, if I was a, a, a director and I started my own business, the last thing I'd want to be get bogged down with is paperwork. Yeah, yeah. And if I had a system like this that enabled me to go on the shop floor and do the produ productive roles that I wanted to do in the first place, this would be brilliant. And then as, as the company grows, I employ more people. Mm -hmm. Is this a modular system that can be added to? It is. So once we've gone through the basic sales and purchase order processing, we can then go through the other modules you could add on. So the system scales. 
based on your requirements. If you're a smaller business, your requirements may be slightly, uh, let's say, less expensive <laughs> than a larger company with a large number of machines. So we can go through and discuss some of those modules later. If you like. and, and if I'm a director again, and you know, if I'm doing a quote for the first time, I'd need input into the quotation. Um, but once, if it's a repeat order, what kind of uh, member of staff would be able to, to, to use this kind so of... So far what we've done is we've put through a works order, so we process a sales order, and we've ordered material, both of which could have been done by somebody administrative. There's no engineering skills required in what we've done so far, and there won't be, to be honest. Right. So if we assume now that that material's arrived, let's go and receive the material. So at the point it comes in, we're going to raise a goods received transaction, the only thing I need to confirm is going to be the supplier cert. It's even told us where to put it. Supplier cert and mill cert for the material. They could be scanned in and they could be saved to the system as well. So they can be recalled later. If we now go back to the works order, if we have a look at the job pack. Now that could comprise of a number of documents. In this case, we've got it set up for both the drawing. So you've got a copy of the customer's drawing and you've got a copy of the process layout. So Here's that's your instruction that's brilliant. for how you need to manufacture it. Let's assume now that, okay, we've had the material in, that's been allocated, we've now machined it. It's gone through inspection, we need to send it out for subcontract treatments. Okay, so let's close that. Again, let's go from here, let's jump back to the purchasing system. Let's now raise a purchase order, this time against the subcontractor. So we'll just click through a few buttons here. You can see it's recalled the subcon description automatically. It's one batch going out. You're making this look very easy. We Jeff. would like it that <laughs> I've done it once or twice. <laughs> um, there's the material batch we've used. We've got intense traceability at this point. If we preview the purchase order, there's the purchase order detailing the drawing number, the issue, and the subcom process. I couldn't really get it wrong. No, so it's making it foolproof. It is making it foolproof, yeah. And in regards to saving time and money actually on the shop floor, yep. um, how does it save time with the machine setup times and the, the tooling setup times how does that work and what information have you got to put in to be able to save that time? okay so what you could do in terms of tool setup in particular there are modules for defining your own tooling and defining tool setup sheets so you really can take the system as far as you wish to um, on a tool setup sheet you would define obviously what all the tools are sequence station numbers and so on estimated tool life and then you can actually predict how many tools you need to process that batch that batch size. Um, have you got those tools in stock? What do you need to order? When do you need to order them and so on? So what you don't want is the machine doing nothing waiting for a white van to turn up. Make sure you've got the tooling at the start. Yeah, this, is, this is taking away a lot of the roles that you would need to do and it, it, it frees up your time or other people's time to do productive roles in my opinion. Yeah, Jeff, it's, far it's more productive than raising paperwork yeah. but the paperwork we know is, is an essential thing that has to be done to trace what happens in your business. Yeah. Um, if we assume now that okay, the parts are back from subcontract, I put them back in. If we have another quick look at the process layout, I'll just put the one document on the screen. Um, so in terms of the process, just scroll down slightly. Parts are back from subcon. Let's assume they've been inspected. It's told you how to pack them. <laughs> You're right. not down to, oh, I didn't know that had to be done like that. No, yeah. all the information's there. You put as much detailed definition in as you require. So if we now go and deliver these to the customer, I'm going to jump to my deliveries module. As Soon as I click on new, the system highlights the right customer. I don't even have to go and look for them. Okay. If I now add a line to that delivery note, as I tab through, it's going to ask me to confirm the material batch, which has the supplier cert and mill cert behind it. I'll confirm the quantity we're delivering and just save that. Jeff, this looks extremely simple and I would strongly recommend that any engineer that's not using any software to run their processes or to look after their shop floor to get in touch with Jeff because this could really save you a lot of time. Yeah. Thank you Jeff. Thank you very much Gio. We've got to say well done. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it's okay. Well, you know your product, don't you? Yeah. But yeah. it is. This is what amazed me about you and your company today is how many different variables are there are in the system that you take care of. Yeah, mm. yeah. Comes, yeah, yeah. Comes yeah. back to engineering specific, but also you listen to customers. We do. Mm.
Now, again, back to my forgetfulness, but uh, if a company, say, is a little bit busy and things have got on top of them a little bit, yeah. how do you deal with that? In terms of sort of credit control, financial side yeah, of it? Financially, yeah, credit control. Okay, I mean, there, it, yeah. are, there are a huge number of examples I could go into, but in terms of trading, we all know that 30-day accounts aren't really 30 days, they'll, they'll stretch. So if you simply work on credit limits, you could be caught out. So one of the things we do in DataTrack, there's a trading limit. Now, if you try to then take on orders that will exceed that trading limit within a month, the system will stop you. Okay. Stop or block, well, stop or warn, depends on how you want War, yours configured. Yeah, yeah. But you may want to stop it, and then it gets referred to somebody else to say, right, look at this account, look at this customer. Are we prepared to increase our exposure? Mm. Let's face it, with some recent things that have happened, you've got yeah, to take capital. those so things into account. I think at the moment, yeah. Korean recent in the news, that is going to have knock on engineers, so it could be very, mm. very yeah. important. But also, you say about the financial controls, when we were chatting with Rob from AIM, he mm. said, you know, our core thing was to get the quotes and those processes. This financial side, we didn't really think about it, but we've now identified clients who he didn't say had too much exposure with, but he didn't realise how much work they were doing with them. So it, it does help, doesn't it? Absolutely. Well, it does. In terms of your turnover in a year, how much of it is with key customers? Yeah. Yeah. You may think the loudest customer isn't necessarily your best customer. <laughs> they may be <laughs> the person you speak to most frequently, but... Yeah. No, but that's true. Yeah. And then when you look at the details a year on, you can actually work out how you improve your business, yeah. which comes on to my next qu question is, how do you quantify your product? And I don't think that's going to be an easy answer, is it? It's not. It's very, very no. difficult. It's not it's, true. it's not a straight line calculation. There's, no. there's no way of doing it. In terms of improving the, the presentation, the reputation of your business, that then, that then leads to more work coming in, from existing customers, from new customers, how do you value that? How do you tell? It's a bit like advertising. Mm -hmm. Everyone needs to advertise and promote their business. You can't put your finger on what you get. You just know that it's improving my business. So when I've, yeah, when I've questioned Phil from Will Park, yeah. Rob from AIM, return on investment, they couldn't give me a specific answer, but Rob, was a, he felt it saved him three admin staff, which is a huge amount. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, admin staff. Every year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then Will Park, it was, it, yeah. they took it on at a perfect time when they uh, they needed to, well, uh, member of staff was moving on, yes. so they didn't need to replace him. No. And that saved him, well, I don't know how much, but a, a lot. Yeah, yeah but that it, is a yeah. way to quantify the it product is. Yeah. at yeah, yeah. the end yeah. of the day. And that's just one of the savings. Yeah, yes. yeah. The efficiency savings are, are great as well. Mm. Mm. So, well, brilliant. how long ago is it the um, company's been going for? 1988 we started the company. Ah, now, with my sharp brain, mm. that means... 30 years in January? February. February, ah. February, yeah, yeah. So that seems You're an opportune... You're premature op here, Sally, oh, settle it's down. fine, it's fine. <laughs> that seems an opportune time <laughs> to... <laughs> Why didn't you light the candles? Which, there were so many much. candles on there. You didn't want... I didn't want, I didn't want your hair to go up or the smoke alarm <laughs> to go up. Yeah, help yourself well, you, exactly. I'm not going to say you should blow out the candles, <laughs> but yeah, you know, we'll, right. we'll leave that. Was, that was baked by myself, as you can tell, it and nice and everything like that. It's a wonderful presentation, Colin. Thank my, you very absolute much. Pleasure. And <laughs> anybody, anyone who's out there and is real smart will count that there's only 26 candles. I do apologise. <laughs> <laughs> we ran out. <laughs> no one would even know. No expense spared. Anyway, um, <laughs> so to get in contact with it yourself, we'll put yes. all of your details on the screen. And really, you know, you're, you're kind of encouraging to say, yep, yeah, talk to us. We can help your yes. business. Yes. If you're a precision engineering company, you have a process to follow. You need to bring in material. You've got subcontractors you deal with. You need to manage your business. We can help you. Perfect. Yeah. So you can take so, it yeah. from great to excellent as yeah. per the list of customers you've got. Exactly. Perfect. Exactly. Now, on that note, I feel that you need a hat, a fridge magnet, a bottle of wine, <laughs> oh, and wine. all yeah, of the goodies that we now. have in the Swarf from Chips goodie bag. So thank you so much for joining us on thank the show. Much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for watching this week's Swarf and Chips. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And make sure that you're watching next week because Empire Manufacturing are joining us. If you want to get involved in the cycle time, don't forget to put your guests in the comments box below. If you want to watch any previous episodes, click on the links here. And as we always say, keep those spindles turning.